Hi everybody, all my followers be welcome to another video. Let's see how the weather is going to be today because it's, it's just starting uh, raining. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but right, let's gonna do this car 2005 Volkswagen Golf. Um, it's a petrol engine, not sure which engine is on this. Um, don't think will be very relevant at least for now. So, what the problem with this? The problem with this, I've been told, is that the speedometer doesn't work. So the miles per hour don't work. Now, um, I have my car in there, so I can't really take this one outside. But I think even here where we are, we should be able just to have a quick, just to have a quick look at it. So I guess that if I do, if I take the car like this, to my fence, and now I drive forward, it should do something. I know we are just moving here very, just a few meters, well, about two meters if that, but that needle should move. And the needle, let's gonna do a little bit closer, up to the fence, and now forward. As you can see, the needle does not move at all. So everything else seems to be working, so my fuel gauge is working, my uh, RPMs are working. There's one thing I've seen here, I don't know exactly what this is, but there is in some sort of thing in here that it looks like it's supposed to give you, as you can see, you can't really see in there, but it, it, sh it should be giving you, what's this, kilometers per hour, perhaps, not really sure where this is connected or how this is connected, will that be influencing anything, we never know, so the first thing I'm going to do, is obviously well actually the first thing I'm gonna do is look for where that is plugged in and see if somehow that could affect this I don't think it would but but you never know okay so disconnected that thing that is actually connected to the OBD port uh, Maxis is already plugged in had to plug the 12 volt the adapter because was battery was flat anyway as you can guys possibly imagine, what we're going to do is, we are going to go to dash. We're going to go to travel codes. No faults detected. Now we're going to go to active tests. And let's going to see selective active tests. <coughs> Tacometer, speedometer. Speedometer, tachometer. I think it's going to be that one. So let's gonna activate the speedometer. Okay, it's refusing. Tachometer. It's refusing. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Let me see if I do sequential. Okay. So you, you can't do selective, so let's gonna activate speedometer. This is good. So it's just a module that refuses um, selective active tests. Okay, so let's gonna go to the next temperature display. There we go, the temperature. So that's good. Next one, fuel gauge. These ones we know they are working, but we'll have to go through one by one. Speedometer. Okay, so that's speedometer again, and nothing is happening. So, yep. Yeah. Then the segment test. Blah 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 blah. 
Immobilizer indicator light. Next. Hot light. It's good. Brake wear indicator. Good. A low fuel level. Good. Oil pressure. Oil level. Seat belt. Brake and parking brake warning. The gong. The buzzer and gong. Turn signals. That's the speaker, the acoustic. And end. Right, so I think it was easier to see that. So basically they call speedometer to both of them. So I'm just gonna go up to the second speedometer. So this is the first step. So speedometer, and as you can see, is my RPMs, yeah? Now I'm gonna go next is temperature which we already did that so i'm just going to go forward fuel gauge forward and now it tells me speedometer again and i presume it's going to be the second dial uh the actually miles per hour activate it says running but nothing is happening so right now guys uh, this is a good way to point me in the right, right direction because to me it sounds like we have a cluster problem but just before that, I'm just escaping, just came out of the test. It's going to go to live data. And all I want to do now is, let me see if I advance to measure. If he accepts that, yes, he does. <coughs> so vehicle speed, engine speed, and now what we're going to do, well, I guess you can guess already. So my engine speed is good. I'm going to try to do this like that. I really hope it's going to go, oops, 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 slippery. Right, I'm going to go back a little bit. Let me close the door. Let's see if we see any readings where it says vehicle speed. Of course you can, look at that. And let's go forward. So that's exactly what I'm saying. So we have speed in there, which means my cluster is receiving the speed, uh, but that is not pointing the speed. So no further ado guys, quite straightforward to be honest. Let's gonna remove this cluster and check it out. Hey, nice to see that as soon as I pull these out, all the clips are broken. Look at that. So obviously, like always, I'm not the first one here. Okay. At least I hope it's not being messed too much. So to remove this by the looks of it, I don't even think there is, I think it's just pulled it out if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, there's two screws right there at the back. Okay, I don't know if you can see one there, one there, and then it should just slide out. Okay, and just pulled out the cluster. And as you can see by the looks of it, this is not original anymore because I doubt that Golf MK5 would come from factory. That NGB, I'm not really sure what that stands for, but Golf MK5, MK5, sorry, uh, that's for sure from a scrapyard by the looks of it. So it looks like this is not the original one anymore, which makes me wonder even more if they replaced this with a second end one and the problem still. Uh, don't know, not really sure. Let's uh, let's open this and try to find out what's wrong. Okay, and to open the first bit, you have all these tabs here. There's about two, three, four, five, six of them, I think it is. And uh, this front face here comes out. Okay, so we're gonna turn this around so no dust gets inside. Put it there for now. Okay, now that's gonna move and to try to get to these motors okay i'll have to take the needles off okay that's gonna go 
carry on a little bit more okay so next you just pry that board up on the sides and it leaves this one in, in at the back and you have this one that obviously is now what comes up here are the motors or the actuators so that's the one that's working this is the one that is not working so I'm keen to actually remove all this out and have a good look at it so am I gonna take the needles out first and then and then take all these off I guess okay picture so I know exactly where the needles stop there we go and now let's gonna take the needles and look at that guys look at that <laughs> oh dear look at that look at that <laughs> right that's interesting okay then let me see what that light is for that light what's the light for Kindly hold on a second. Let me see what this light is for. ESP. Look at that. See that? ESP. Okay then. Well, I'm not gonna touch that, guys. I'm not gonna touch that. That's for sure. Okay, so just want to understand all oh, right okay how the motor comes off so I've already seen so I'm gonna have to push these little things out and then the mo there we go should be another one that's gonna be under there crap okay so let me take the motor out and then we'll have a look at it okay and a few tabs and a few clips later uh, all this is out and now we just need to disorder these two point ears these two points which is what is going to uh, activate my um, my motor. Okay, and I definitely should be using my other multimeter, but I think this will do the job just for a quick test. I really need to get a bench multimeter, something a little bit better than this, but uh, uh, right, let's gonna do one thing. So this is my miles per hour, this is my temperature, this is my fuel, this is my RPMs, which is working. So they all work except that one. First thing I'm going to do is measure the motor on this side and I have 138 under 138 ohms okay this one I have 138 138 and for my surprise 138 so I guess it might be gonna it will be something different than the motor still let's gonna take it off and have a look at it Top down it should come out because I pushed So, I need to push that a little bit further down. I don't think I do, but let me see something here that can push it a little bit more. Yes, there is more to go down. That nah, should come out now. Let's see if it comes off. There we go. Oh dear, there's another two. Hold on. I didn't realize that. Damn it. There is two coils on this. Obviously. Damn it. Let me measure the other coil. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> Let me see on this one then. So on the good one we have one coil. 139 obviously. And the other coil. 139. So this was one coil. There's another one here. Let's see how much I have on this one. 
137. 39, so it still it looks like it's good still. It's gonna remove this side as well. Damn it, I didn't realize there's two coils on this. It should come out now. Yeah. Okay, it's now. It's gonna check. Can I open this? Should be able to. I need to take that off in there. I don't know. I never hope and wonder this, so God knows how this comes out. Just like that. I think I need to turn these little things in there. Now it should come out. There's two little tabs that are twisted in there. That we had to turn. Hopefully that was what was holding this together. Little things I need to really see if this does the job. Right, what am I missing here? If the coils are good, it's gonna have to be the gears inside of this. So, why is not coming out? It's gonna have to come out, regardless of you like it or not. What is actually holding this together now? Is down there then? Okay. Okay, I got you. We'll cut that and then we'll figure our way. These melted things here. Okay, one there. There's another one there. Let me see how I'm gonna take that one out. Even if I need to glue these in the end. There we go. No, no. Now it's going to come out. There we go. Just don't want to lose anything. Whoo! Okay. There is a little bit of burn in there. Can you see in there? Oh, no, you can't. Can you see in there that burn? It could be this that is causing the issue. It, it could be. So let's go into... Oh dear. No, 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 no. Okay, so you two are going to have to come out somehow. Oh, this is bloody tiny. Okay, you come out. Now you... There... You come out. 
Okay. Want to come on now or what? Okay. Definitely, this one here on this side is burned. Although the coil is good, this is burned in there. Just don't know how. Is this soldered in there or what? Definitely, you're not going to be able to see on camera, but definitely, this coil is all burned right there at the top. Oh dear, sorry about that. It's all burned around there. Can you see how burned it is? It is also burning there, maybe you can't see it. Maybe if I show you the other one, you can see how clean this one is. See? This one is burned on both sides. So, let me see what we can do with this. Okay, so I don't know if this is soldered or whatever. I've cleaned this here at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of flex here. And I'm going to put the solder iron here on the top on both sides um, and, and see if that solders again. It looks like it's just a poor contact here on the core. I don't know I don't know how the core is made of, if this is, I don't know. But we're gonna do that and see what happens. Okay, so already put a little bit of flex on both, on both hands. Now, we're gonna do that. It's gonna do it like this. Gonna turn it around, do the same on this side. Let it cool down a little bit. Gonna, I'm going to just clean a little bit of this flex so it doesn't go get sticky somewhere. A little bit of alcohol. Hold on a second. That should do. Let's see if we, this works now. So, it's gonna put these coils back in there. Just the other way. Push this down, like that. Now there is one thing guys I haven't showed you and I should have showed you and I do apologize but when you apply 5 volts to any of these coils the needle should move. Okay? It doesn't move from one end to the other but it should move. It should just move a little bit. Which means
when I put this here when I touch the coil that was faulty with about 5 volts I would say that should just just jog a little bit not moving too much but it should jog so let's kind of look at the cog all of us and see what happens oh you seen that oh dear let me reverse the polarity and now we should move again a little bit yes he moved he did move now let's close this and hope for the best now we're going to redo these bits that we cut so I've done this one already so we'll just press this properly here that's it holds like a treat okay looks like everything is proper done now okay sounds good to me let's put this together and let's try it okay the motor is now in place let's just uh, resolder the coils Done. Good. That sounds good to me. Now let's gonna see this needle just moving slightly. Let's see if I can. There, so five volts. Let's gonna see if we see it moving. See it moving just slightly on this one. You see it back now. It needs to move from this side. Oh, lovely! Sweet, it's moving. Can you see it? We're gonna have to do it this side now. Look at that. Look at the needle. See that. So it was not doing this before. So I'm quite happy and quite confident that this is going to work. So let's kind of put everything back on. It's gonna put the cluster back in place. Uh, I would actually try this just like that. I'm actually gonna try this just like this before I close it because This one. There's no point to put the other two because the other two was actually working. But hey, why not? Okay, let's gonna take it to the car like this and try it. See if it works. Okay, I couldn't push it all the way in because otherwise I couldn't pull it out. So I had to take the plug actually from that frame and somehow connected it. But as you can see, look at that. Now it's going to activate this uh, active tests. Let's going to activate these things again. And let's going to start obviously with the. Come on. Oh dear. Okay, so activate the speedometer. There we go. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, next. 
is my temperature. There we go. Now, next, fuel gauge. Next, moment of the truth. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, let's get out of this. And it looks like we fixed it. So, next step, put everything back on. Chuck the, the cluster back in there and do one last test. Make sure it's working. But hey, we got a fix, guys. We did got a fix. Okay, and now it's time to put it back on the car and have one last check, but should be good. It's gonna be very difficult for me to push this in with one hand, but I'll do my best. Come on. Okay. Come out from there, so you're gonna have to go back in somehow. It might be the other way around. I need to go like this, and now. Turn around, there we go. Okay. Come on, all the way. There it is. It's gonna turn the ignition on. There it is, sweet, all good. We know about our ABS light, sorry, ESP light. <laughs> we'll have a quick look just to see what's wrong, but it's gonna do one last check at my dashboard oh. uh, active tests sequential it doesn't accept selective so let's gonna do the first one okay there we go sweet next I'm not interested on these ones we'll just have to go through them so fuel gauge and now shut down there we go look at that nice nice okay escape that and now one last one last test let's gonna do what we were doing at the start so let's go and go on reverse a little bit Oh, look at that, already so we're moving. It's coming out forward. Look at my speedometer there. Seen that? Good. So to me, that there is a fix now. Yes, for you guys that are gonna say, well, that's not gonna last, whatever. It might not, but we got it fixed for now. So I always tell the, the, the owners, guys, when I do things like this, I always say, look, in my last a week, my last 10 years I don't know if it fails again then I know where the problem is and we either get one of new motor if they are available I, I didn't research or we'll have to get a cluster for spares and repairs and replace that I don't know but for now we've got a fix uh, but I think the main thing on on this kind of feed is that I do guys is for you to understand and to go deep into things try to actually figure out what's wrong so yes was something wrong with the motor or with that actuator but what was wrong with the actuator so let's go in a deep that's gonna go deep a little bit more and try to actually understand everything to the actually where the problem is uh, and just very quickly let's gonna see what's wrong with my ESP although we're not gonna fix nothing like that because I was not asked to touch that it was purely for the speedometer <laughs> you see that? It's one of those, most likely. Um, not sure if this is the one with the, the pressure sensor inside the module. If it is, there we go, look at that. 
that would be a that would be a um, module replacement most likely or maybe not but hey I wasn't asked to look at that so obviously I'm not gonna touch that that's gonna come out of the module so that stops flashing there we go so that's it uh, what else to say uh, really hope you have enjoyed the video I uh, hope there's some information here that can be useful to someone out there uh, if you do have any questions any comments please put them below and like always thanks for watching